Hello, welcome to Aging Well in America. I'm Anne Marie Guattari, your host. Every day, 7,000 people in the United States turn 65 years old. There are 5.5 million people are aged 85 or older. By the year 2050, that number will become 20. 20 million people will be the age of 85 or older. Are we ready? Is America ready? There's so much good work going on around the world, around the country, and right here in our own community. And today we have one of the best examples, one of my favorite. With us from St. John Hospital are Cindy, Head of Volunteer Services, Lisa, who works with our star of the show, Hope. We're going to talk about how Hope brings joy to the elderly who are at St. John Hospital. So welcome very much, ladies. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cindy, please start and tell us a little bit about the program at St. Okay. John. It's fairly new. Yes, yes, you are correct. Thank you for being, let me be in here today. Absolutely. Um, yes, the program was started at St. John Hospital in October of 2011, and that's when Hope arrived to our facility. Okay. Uh, actually, it was mm -hmm. on uh, Halloween, mm -hmm. and that was the first day that Hope presented herself there. Um, very, very happy to have her. Uh, the program was actually started in 2009. In every facility in the St. John Providence Health System has a facility dog. Okay. Um, it was started at uh, St. John Providence mm -hmm. in Southfield mm -hmm. and then St. John Providence Park in Novi. Mm -hmm. um, St. John Macomb was the first of the East Region, which we call the East Region, mm -hmm. which is the St. John Macomb, St. John Oakland, St. John Morass and River District Hospital okay. uh, was the first to have the facility dog. And each of these facilities has one dog or more than one? One dog. Okay. At this point. All right. Yes, one dog. Some of the facilities are smaller than others, so sure. yes, there is one dog there. Um, Hope is again at Morass. Mac is at St. John Macomb. Okay. And Quinn is at St. John Oakland. Okay. And Very the good. names were picked from uh, a group of people who gave names okay. and those were picked uh, right. as far as, as what they were. Um, so basically that's how HOPE began okay. at our hospital. So HOPE has been through some training. The people who handle HOPE in the hospital have been through training. Yes. Tell us a little bit about how the program works. If I'm a patient or my mother is a patient at St. John, mm -hmm. how do I learn about HOPE <clears throat> and then what will she do for me? Okay. Usually people learn about HOPE by seeing HOPE. Okay. Uh, for example, some of the handlers will take HOPE into the various large areas, such as the Van Aslander uh, Pavilion, which mm -hmm. is the new pavilion there, or newer mm -hmm. pavilion. And uh, HOPE will lay here, just as she is mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And people will come up and they'll see her, and they perhaps might come up and say, oh, I'd like to have you come and see my mom. Mm -hmm. She's in room such and such, or mm -hmm. my dad, or my child, mm -hmm. or whomever. And that's usually how we get referrals for HOPE. Um, spiritual care is another area uh -huh. which gives us information regarding patients who are interested in seeing the dog. Okay. Yes. Very good. Very good. Well, I know you have some wonderful stories of what Hope has done for people in the hospital in her short short time there. She's been a so true joy. We've tell us a little her. bit about uh, about some of those stories you were telling me earlier, Lisa. She, um, she brings a lot of joy, I think, and just a lot of calming effect on people that are in the hospital. Mm -hmm. They're nervous to be there. They're anxious. They're waiting test results and whatnot. She's very, um, this is her. You know, she <laughs> wants to lay down, and if you, she'll roll over for a quick belly rub, and that, you'd yeah. be surprised how much that can decompress somebody's anxiety. Yes. So she, uh, I think one of my favorite stories is, the, is a little lady that I had taken her up to see, and she was pretty feeble in bed, curled up, daughter was by the bedside feeding her. And when she got a sight of hope, her eyes got a little bit brighter. She waved me into the room. And we spent some time in there that morning mm -hmm. talking with the daughter and they were waiting test results and pretty nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. Well, by the end of the visit, I had given her some treats for hope and uh, she had literally propped herself up in bed and swung her legs over. And uh, she was giving hope treats. So the daughter finally looked over at me before I left and said, for three days I've been spoon feeding her applesauce, but today with the dog she finds the strength to sit up 
and feed and feed the dog, <laughs> but not herself. That, that is <laughs> so that that's one of my favorite stories. And she story. was very, very, very sweet. But yeah. um, you know, she's she's as amazing for the family support as she is for the actual patient I, in the hospital. I imagine. I imagine. She really is. So we know that pets have therapeutic effect on yes. on. Um, on really, on all of us, right. but really do serve a purpose for those um, who are ill yes. and in special need. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Well, we know through studies, they've done studies that say that the blood pressure is decreased when you're in the company of a, of a pet. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, also it um, makes people feel peaceful. I mm -hmm. think that's the best uh, expression that I can use. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have had a, another one of the areas that Hope visits is the surgical waiting lounge. Uh -huh. And that is a very, very, very intense, very stressful area. For the families. For the families, yes, absolutely. Um, so Hope travels around there, and there have been a lot of stories that have come out of that area where Hope has you know, decompressed, helped people decompress, right. help right. people relax, uh, <laughs> put them in perspective, yes. basically. Yes. Um, so. Again, that's a very, very important place for Hope to visit. Yeah, what a what a great um, what a um, a great addition to the hospital offerings. It show us a little bit of what uh, how how Hope operates. Sure. Well, when you have treats, she'll do just about anything you'd like her to do. <laughs> yeah. Can we hope here. Okay. So you're you're at the um, you're. Tell us how it uh, how it happens. You're okay. at the door of the um, of the hospital room. First at room. the door. Well, right now we'll show you a little bit of just Hope's obedience. She's okay. going to stay. I can't go back too far here. Yeah. Come. Sit. Walk. Good girl. <laughs> So you can see she'll do pretty much anything you want her she to do, really which is very is important well. because she is in a hospital. Yes. So we mm -hmm. don't want her surfing for things on the floor. So right. she knows leave it very well. I should probably hear that often during the day. And we wipe her paws down when she comes back. She comes back to my office, which is a, an area that is badge access only. So okay. when mm -hmm. the volunteers come and take her for an hour or so shift, they bring her back to my office for her break. Where when the vest comes off, she's a regular puppy. And she brings her ball, and she brings her chew toy, and she likes her bones. And uh, she does. She runs the hallway pretty much uh, like a regular dog for most of the day uh, when she's not working. But when she puts her vest on, she knows it's time to go to work. She's a different dog when she puts the vest on. So you would pretty much enter the door. At this point, since October, I'd say we have some floor champions where a lot of the staff appreciates her after mm -hmm. caring for sick people all day. She offers a lot of, I think, Yes, absolutely. She's very important to staff she as well. She really is a staff that, that's loves That's something her. you don't even think about. No. But how important. That's right. Because often those the nurses and the doctors, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. especially in our area, because our emergency department sees not only just sick patients, but they see some trauma, mm -hmm. fatalities, and things right, like that. When right, there's a traumatic right. situation like that, this dog and their is the shifts key are to quite long. The, very so yes, very. The, the dog really does they work offer. hard and the mm -hmm. staff really enjoys mm -hmm. her but you it, sometimes the staff members on the floor that really have taken a fancy to her they'll call us during the day and say you know don't forget us today or you know we have a right. couple patients in you know room 522 524 so you know where you're going okay and mm -hmm. you always want to check with the desk to make sure there's no allergies people right. that are afraid of dogs that right. don't want to see her and you just kind of take the floor by ear. Once you hit the door, you know who wants the dog. Right? Okay. Yeah. So You'll see people perk up instantly when they see the yeah, dog. Yeah, Absolutely. like the example you just mm -hmm. gave us. So you mentioned a little bit about um, she's kind of her home base in the hospital mm -hmm. is your office, right. and it's a locked area, mm -hmm. um, yes. which makes it safe for her and for the, um, the hospital residents mm -hmm. and, and uh, patients. Mm -hmm. um, Tell us how that's all scheduled, and where does Hope live at the end of the day? I'm thinking she doesn't stay in the that's hospital by herself all night. Right. Nope. <laughs> Hope has, we have a host family. Okay. Uh, which is an associate who works in the lab an area. An associate. She's a um, full uh, associate of the hospital okay. and employee of the hospital. Okay. That is mandatory because Hope has to come into the hospital five days a week. So it's mandatory that the host family be an associate. We also have a co-host who mm -hmm. is another associate. Mm -hmm. So Hope comes in every morning with Cheryl, who mm -hmm. is her 
family mm -hmm. and goes home every night with Cheryl. Okay. Uh, the volunteers, who are the volunteer handlers, uh, as I said, there are 10 shifts, mm -hmm. and that's Monday through Friday, morning and afternoon. They come in and they go to Lisa's area, um, which is a secured area. And the most important thing to, to realize is that Hope always has to be secured. She has to be on a leash and she has to be with somebody at all times. That's the most important thing. So the volunteers come and pick her up and take her to the various scheduled areas. So they, um, there's a schedule and she sort of checked out almost. Yes, like absolutely. A, like Lisa a keeps a copy book. of that right. uh, mm -hmm. in her door. Okay. And, uh, and sometimes because they are volunteers, uh, they might have situations, they might be ill or whatever. So many times if Hope has not been there for a particular shift, the staff will get very antsy and say, where's Hope? We missed her, mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So you can see the importance of, <clears throat> of them, you know, of her mm -hmm. coming up to greet the staff also, mm -hmm. as well as the patients. What about the training? She's been through some training? Yes, Hope uh, was trained by Paradise Training, uh, along with the other facility dogs that have been placed. And uh, she was there since she was a puppy, until the time that she was brought to our facility. So she was approximately two years old um, okay. when she mm -hmm. was brought in, you know, mm -hmm. in October. Mm -hmm. And uh, very, very stringent training. <laughs> of course, as you can see, that she's very good with the commands. Uh, they would not turn her loose into a facility until they felt that she was appropriate for right. that. Right. Um, the training for the handlers mm -hmm. uh, was a 12-hour training, which was provided by the Paradise Training okay. Center, mm -hmm. which is a, a married couple. And um, it was divided into three segments, uh, three hours, two, three hours, and one, four hour, which was very intense for the handlers. Mm -hmm. And that was mandatory. To become a handler, you had to go through the training process. Okay. okay. You, you had mentioned earlier that um, there are other dogs in the hospital yes. that mm -hmm. um, really serve the same purpose. So um, I have a dog. Mm -hmm. My mother's in the hospital. My mother loves my dog. Mm -hmm. I can make that connection happen in the hospital with yes. some some guidance some uh, under some regulation there is a policy it's a hospital policy that does allow pets to come in to see your mother father okay. whomever personal pet there are as i said as i had mentioned to you earlier there are what we call therapy dogs that come in which is different than a facility dog and sometimes it's hard for people to understand the difference. Mm -hmm. So uh, a dog such as Hope is a facility dog. It's owned by St. John Providence Health System. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A therapy dog is a privately owned. Your dog, for example, if you wanted your dog to become a therapy dog, you would go through a various training program, which could be such as Pet Therapy International. Mm -hmm. There are many of them on, on the websites mm -hmm. that you can find out. But they go through very stringent training also. They have mm -hmm. to go through a final test. Mm -hmm. They are certified. And at that point, if a person would want them to be a therapy dog mm -hmm. at St. John, for example, then they would call volunteer services, go through the same training and that a volunteer would, and their dog would be able to come in after you know, various protocol. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's really nice because I'm sure that um, if, if, uh, if left to kind of it, the, its own natural devices, hope would probably be overworked. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, that's, yeah. that's a situation that we monitor very closely. Yeah. That's why it's very important for when Hope goes back to the area in the administrative offices that she does rest. Yeah. That's very, very important. And usually she has some respite because on any given week, there might be one or two people who have situations that they're not able to come in. Um, so usually Hope does get a rest. For example, yeah. last week Hope was had Friday off because both of the handlers were not able to come in. Okay. So Lisa, you that. fill in though, right? I fill in on yeah. those days mostly. Yeah. If there's no volunteer, I, I'll wait for usually, and it's usually um, right. pastoral care will call and say, you know, there's a patient up on a certain floor. Right. Um, and being in the ER and attached to the ER, there's always a need for this stock. So, you know, I, I right. take her out there frequently. So sometimes and, um, you may just walk her around the, sure, uh, like the uh, ER Sure, like one day room. when I had her out there, there was a gentleman that was pacing a little bit outside of his wife's room, and it was early in the morning, and uh, he had been there all night with her, they, uh, waiting test results, and uh, I could tell he was a little anxious, and uh, 
I thought, well, you know, I knew she didn't have a volunteer that morning. I went back and got her and brought her out. And I must have spent a half an hour with this gentleman. And he was so happy to have this dog. He was hugging her, kissing her. And he told me before I left. And so was his wife. She was, you know, she had perked up. She, they, they brought her from a nursing home, as it was. And she had so missed her dogs. Her own so dogs. He said yes. to me, the IV hanging right there has all of her medication in it, and nothing that you put in there today will be as helpful as this dog was to her. Isn't that I was like, I was so, yeah, he was Isn't very, very grateful to have spent that time with her. And it helped the time go past, and by the time we left, his test results were back, and it worked out. But, That's great. Yeah, she's, great. No, really? and she, like, you know, we had said, too, some days she'll, she'll go to a surgical lounge area where she only sees 50 people, and then there's days... Even on a day when she doesn't have a volunteer and I'm in the ER with her, she she probably will get 100 hits that day, you know. So she's touching a lot of people right. even oh, if she's absolutely. not going exactly. to the room. Absolutely. But so she's, yes. very, um, she's very acclimated to her role now, mm -hmm. and she's very communicative about when she has to go to the bathroom, when she mm -hmm. needs to, you know, rest. Mm -hmm. When a, Sometimes when a volunteer will come and get her, and you can really sense that she's not engaging, mm -hmm. uh, they'll bring her back. They'll yes. bring her back, and they'll 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 say she's tired or she's you know she's not yes. her usual engaging yeah. Yeah. self. So she, you read her cues. It's important yes. that she's engaging, yes. and if she's not, she needs rest. And she'll come back, and she'll hit. We have a big fluffy pillow in my office for her, and she loves her pillow. And when she curls up and goes down, she's she's down for the count for a while. You had mentioned that um, she actually stayed with a hospice patient at the family's request. It was not this the specific dog. It oh, was okay. one of her partners, okay. though, in therapy training. Right. Yes, tell mm -hmm. us about that. And um, she was a hospice patient getting mm -hmm. ready to pass. They had dogs at home, and uh, the, the daughter felt that that was part of the problem with her letting go was the, was the dog issue. Now, these dogs are four on the floor. They're not allowed to get on the beds or anything like right. that. Four but on a, the floor. But in a situation right. like that, when all the lines are pulled mm -hmm. and there's no risk there, um, the nurse was there and all the family was there and they, they put the dog up on the bed and helped the lady pass. Yep. So it's, uh, it's very touching. So now to the other end of the spectrum, we know that she also is loved in the pediatric Absolutely. area. Tell us what, uh, yes. what she does there. I'm sure well, there's Well, for example, yesterday, uh, Hope was in beads yesterday and uh, one of the handlers, which y y is not the usual handler for that area, but she was a fill-in. She uh, did another day and she decided that she would come and fill in for the particular handler. And she came back with a story that um, there is a young lady, a little girl, two-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old, who is a frequent patient. Mm -hmm. And anytime hope comes up, and she's non communicable, she does not talk. Okay. And uh, she has a lot of problems, physical problems that, you know, are, are quite okay. great. And when hope comes up, she is just in awe of her. And that's basically what happens with hope. Anytime, even in the waiting areas, in the pavilion or in the professional buildings, when hope is just there to meet and greet mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. children just love mm -hmm. her. They crawl all over mm -hmm. her. She loves kids. She just loves kids. That's her. That's her forte. She gets and then, off the elevator. Um, you know, again, <laughs> it's knows. the same thing. Does she thing. know she's she, going? When she gets off the elevator on the she knows floor, where she her is. tail starts yep. wagging. Yep. And she, Ab she absolutely. Knows. Yeah. But there again, um, you know, there are all types of patients in the hospital, and she is very amicable with everyone and, and just willing to help everyone yeah. out. My favorite. And that's very touching. Ped story with her is a young boy, teenager a little bit, you know, rough and yeah, uh, yeah. not going to give in, you <laughs> yeah, know, right, right. too cool for everybody. Uh huh. Mom called us up with the dog, and he was like, oh, rolling the eyes. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, really? Oh, gosh, you know, yeah. I'm too, too cool, cool for, for the for dog. This, yeah. mom. And, uh, nice. So funny, because by the end of that visit, I was talking with the mom, yeah. you know, and on the corner of your eye, you're kind of looking back there, and yeah. he's... He's all over her, yeah. you know. And uh, then when we left, I said, you know, well, if you're still here tomorrow, he said, you can bring her back. Yeah. I'm still <laughs> if, you want. Want. Yeah, if, if you want. want. Yeah. If you must. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, yeah, that was another good visit for her. So, You had said something earlier on before we, um, before we started the show about mm -hmm. um, sometimes having to coax mm -hmm. hope in mm -hmm. to, uh, into the room and toward the bed. Mm -hmm. And I would think it would be kind of just the opposite, that she would naturally go. Mm. Because you'd mentioned mm -hmm. that sh you believe she has an innate sense mm -hmm. of illness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there were some, uh, you, you made me realize some things about a mm -hmm. hospital that dogs, mm -hmm. um, is, it's not a natural right. area. So tell us about uh, your thoughts on what's well, going on there. 
personally, and this is only my personal opinion, yeah. I mean, we know that animals kind of shun the sick within their own packs. Uh, it could be anything from an elephant to whatever, you know. Um, they kind of leave that particular individual alone. Um, Hope and all the other facility dogs were trained not in a hospital setting. Uh, my personal opinion is that they should be because they need to know the sights, sounds, and smells of, of a hospital. hospital. Even if you go to a nursing home, which they did do, it's not the same as being in a hospital. No. There's particular medications, there's particular odors on a patient that is perhaps a cancer patient mm -hmm. or in different stages of their illness. Mm -hmm. And there is smells on the carpeting, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the first days that Hope was there, I took her over to the Van Aslander Cancer Center. And there is the command that says, leave it. Mm -hmm. If she's picking some, or any of the dogs are picking something up on the floor or constantly sniffing the floor. And she, her nose was on the floor the entire time we were there. We even got on the elevator and her nose was just at the floor which was very odd to me. And again, my opinion is that she could smell the particular odors and scents that were in that area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. I, She's a, not a machine. Right. No. She's not right. a machine. She's right. sensitive she to certain animal. things where other dogs are not. She, she does not like dark rooms. Uh -huh. She does not like dark right. rooms. She will always halt at a dark room. She does not like it. You really have to coax her in. We always try to say, can we turn a light on mm -hmm. or open a blind? Because she's she's very, and even when you get her in, she's very guarded for some reason. Mm. She doesn't like the dark right. rooms. And certain smells. I don't know if it's certain medicines yeah. that she smells and mm -hmm. IVs. Mm -hmm. I notice she'll always avoid a hand that has an IV in it. Mm -hmm. She does not like, or if it's, it could be the tape. Yeah. yeah you know, there, but there's certain things that she just doesn't respond to. You mentioned also to. the sounds, right? Right. The, the machines. Oh, the, uh, the vents. In the beginning. Ventilators. People have a ventilator. She is very, She's very, better now, but in the beginning yeah, that really yeah. freaked her so out. So where oh, was she uh, trained, she if not in hospitals? Where was she trained? She was trained at various public areas, uh, for example, Walmart. You know, okay. I know that to, he mentioned to be that used to, to be acclimated, the, just be socialized. The public. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay. To mm -hmm. kids, to adults, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. whoever, people in wheelchairs, mm -hmm. whatever. But as far as the very specific scents and smells and sights, uh, again, as I feel, that's very important. So the next round, you feel, will yes. be, uh, the yes. training will yeah. be It's in a learning process. process for all of them. Sure. This is the first time they've ever done. Sure. We are the only, supposedly, we are the only facility in the United States that has this type of dog. The, the system, the St. John yeah. system. No, all of the hospitals that we're aware of. Yeah, I, I know, but mm -hmm. when you say the only hospital, you mean yes. the St. John. Facilities, yes. Facilities, all the facilities. are yes. the, only, John system, I'd say the only. The only group yes. of them. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, it's so easy, you think that uh, we might just all do it, right? <laughs> Well, you would think so. It's a lot. Of, it's a big commitment. Yeah, it is a it big, is it a big is. commitment. It you is. know, big you commitment. can't leave yes. some days. You know, if you're, yes. you always have to make sure somebody's with this dog all the time. Right. So, and you know, it, it you have to look toward administration and leadership mm -hmm. if they're on board with the idea that it is helpful to mm -hmm. patients. Mm -hmm. I think perhaps that many people don't feel that, especially, mm -hmm. you know, I always say that not everyone loves dogs. That's mm -hmm. true. Not everyone loves animals. And just That's because true. you do, and this is what I tell the handlers also, mm -hmm. is that the dog is going to take a cue from you. Mm -hmm. I have a, a lady that, uh, actually one of the first handlers, and she was very ambivalent about becoming a handler. Uh, she's a volunteer in another area, mm -hmm. and she very, does very well with that. But she wanted to do it, and then she didn't want to do it. She has cats. Uh -huh. Never had a dog in her life. Uh -huh. And I said, well, you know, Phyllis, try it out. Just try it out. Anytime you can quit. Well, yeah. she stuck with it. And she is still on board today. So now she's a cat and a dog. So person. she had to learn yes. to feel comfortable. Yes. And we always say, and the handlers will say it too, that the dog can feel this through the leash. Mm -hmm. They can feel, if you're tentative, they can feel that. Oh, if that's, you're, uh, you know, that's so very, um, that's that's very, very important. Clear. Yes, yep. even with um, your, you know, your own dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, me walking my dog. Absolutely. Um, he knows when I'm uh, not paying Anxi attention. Yeah, or anxious. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah. yes. So what have you learned? What has the hospital learned? And, and where do you see this program going? Well, we knew the importance. Of, we thought we knew the importance of having the facility dogs. But now we know that it's definitely, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely true. Um, just for the sights and seeing people, seeing people smile, seeing people getting the feedback. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important is the feedback. And how important it is for the staff. 
Yeah. Well, that's that's what we found out. Yeah, that's huge. You know, Do very, you see very having important. more than one? We were so growing. The <laughs> we program? were looking. You know, we were thinking of that in a hospital our size because ours is, I think, the largest hospital. Well, mm -hmm. other than Providence, right. uh, you that, have a pretty well scheduled though, so she's not yeah. too crazy. But we probably eventually yeah. could use another yeah. one. I, I'm yeah, I'm very careful with that. We don't want her to burn out. We don't want her to be tired. As I said, she does have respite days that are very important for her to have. You said she has about ten shifts a day. She has 10 shifts a week. Oh, a week. Mm -hmm. a yes. Week. Okay. Yes. The volunteers commit to a four-hour shift. Oh, okay. Now, is she out four hours? No. No, she no. is not out four hours. No. So people say, well, isn't that too much for the dog? You know, eight hours a day, that's too much. Okay. She is, in reality, but not out for eight hours. But she's with one person for a, a stretch of a time. About three it's and a half hours. Three to three and a half hours. Got it. Yes. Yeah. And yes. she gets fresh air during the day? And oh, yes. Oh, yeah. She, oh, she, yes. Uh, she gets her breaks. And you have, um, her potty breaks. you mentioned that she has, um, um, a, a vet has volunteered his or her yes. services. Thompson, yes. Uh -huh. And in the and same with the groomer? And that for pets, for groomer, mm -hmm. grooming. Very nice. Yes, very, very That's nice of great. them to do so. Are there other animals that you can see putting in a program like this? Maybe not at St. John, but at, um, uh, in a, uh, as a therapeutic. Do other animals do the same? Are the you same talking thing? about like cats and yeah, so on? Yeah, um, In the policy, it does state that dogs and cats can come in if they follow the protocol. I have never seen a cat. I've never seen a cat. Never seen a cat. Okay. But I'm thinking, yeah, I mean, okay. some people, like I say, not everybody is into okay. dogs. So but we have to be very careful in the hospital is that many people are afraid mm -hmm. of dogs. Right. And right. it's quite obvious. And that's one of the things that the handlers have to watch very closely is that if somebody shies away, we've had people that will go all mm -hmm. the way around because they don't want to walk, or they'll stop, they'll stop straight in their mm -hmm. steps yeah, and yeah. not even go forward. Yeah. So you have to be very attuned to that. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's people's what's body important language. about the, yes. um, the handlers. Yes. Well, I just, we've come to the end of our program okay. already, if you can believe it. Yeah. So Cindy, Lisa, Hope, thank you so much. Thanks this for having Thank you for having us. us. This thank has just very been much. terrific. So thank you. I want to invite the community again to send us your ideas, your questions, um, anything to do with the issue of aging, and we will, um, we will look at having uh, future programs around those issues. If you want to get in touch with, the, um, with a therapeutic dog program at St. John, you'll see the, um, the phone number and website on the, on the uh, screen coming up. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.